We're going right to our studios, our TR60 hotline. I love this guy. He's fabulous. He's definitely a Chicago fixture, homegrown product. You currently watch him on Fox 32. He is the sports director over there. And I got to tell you, let's see if we can get some stories out of this guy. Because as we well know, The Last Dance, it continues to play, airs tonight on ESPN, 8 p.m. And this gentleman on our TR60 hotline was definitely in the middle of it. As the uh, the Bull sideline reporter back during the dynasty years for your Chicago Bulls, He's on our TR60 hotline right now. He's the one. He's the only. He's the incomparable. Here's Lou Canellas. What's up, Lou? How are you, buddy? Lou? I'm here. You here, Rob? You, you there, buddy? Here? Yes, sir. How are you? How you doing, man? Hey, it's good, man. I had a stupendous uh, intro for you, and, it, well... <laughs> At any rate, welcome to the Rewind Sports 60, brother. How are you, man? Good to hear your beautiful your, your beautiful voice, and of course, we get a chance to check you out on Fox 32. How's everything going? It's been terrific. Thank you very much. How about you guys? You guys good? Well, you yes. know what? Yes, sir. You ready for episodes five and six? Yes. yes. We're yes. ready. Let's go. We're ready, man. Now, c- c- let me tell you something. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> Quentin, I know. Quentin Demps came in all the way from the northern suburbs to sit in and talk with you about The, the Last, Last Dance. Because he wants to pick your brain about every all the Dennis stories. Dennis Rodman. <laughs> I want to know some more about Dennis. I, I miss you in that Bears defensive secondary. I don't miss it. <laughs> I that much right now. I don't miss it. Uh, I miss my homies, but I don't miss that that secondary right there. Hey, hey Lou, we'll get a chance to talk a little bit uh, Chicago Bears football before we let you go. But hey, man, you were front and center regarding that team. I I, I can remember the days uh, where I mean they were certainly. Uh, the Beatles of the modern era back during that time. Any place and every place you, you would go, uh, definitely here in the city of Chicago, but throughout the, the, the country and the world, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, the whole shebang, these guys were definitely rock stars, and you had an opportunity to, to spend a lot of time with them covering that team. Reflect and uh, share with our listening audience what that experience was like for you back during that time. Man, incredibly fortunate, Jerry. I'll tell you, I'm a Chicago kid, grew up on the south side in Oak Lawn. So to be in that position, you know, when you're, when you're first there, you, you knew something was special when Michael came to town in 84 and the way he exploded on the scene in 84 and 85. And then when he started to put the pieces together, Jerry did, and they started rattling off championships. But it, it frankly was surreal being with the Bulls and – especially when Dennis came. And, you know, imagine that things got crazy with Dennis. They were crazier than you might imagine. But it and, – and, and then to, to add that they just – you know, they won championships. They worked harder than every other team out there. They had, his, they had the greatest of all time, in my opinion. And we can sit and do a show about, you know, Michael against LeBron for – as long as we want, but it it just, everything came together, and to be a kid in his 30s from Chicago, in that position, I was incredibly fortunate, and I I remember, I tell the story often, that I remember sitting on the team plane, now, the Bulls used to use the MGM Grand plane, which the Rolling Stones used as well, and in the middle part of the plane is where you would get your food, and you would, uh, you know, there'd be a bar there, and that's where I sat with Billy Wennington and the old Arnie Harris, who was a producer at WGN and Mm -hmm. some of the other guys. And um, I remember looking at Dennis once and thinking, I just sat there and had this moment by myself and thought, God, please stop time. I just wanted it to stop because I knew I was part of something special. And I I never wanted it to end. That's how fortunate I knew I was. Lou, it's Lauren Cox here. And speaking of The Last Dance, episodes five and six, they're going to transport us back to Madison, Madison Square Garden, 1993 Easter Conference Finals. And, you know, Knicks fans aren't going to be too happy about this whole five and six. But take us back to those episodes in that 1993 Eastern Conference Finals. Man, that's Charles Smith, isn't it? Yep, that's it. Man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Number one, I don't know if Quentin's ever been in Madison Square Garden. I think you have, Riles. There's nothing. There's no, I, and listen, I think that the old Chicago Stadium, the, the, the crowd, the noise inside, inside the old Chicago Stadium, and frankly inside the United Center for that matter, um, they were as loud as uh, arenas as I've been to, right up there with Key Arena in Seattle before the uh, Supersonics disappeared. 
that was that was one of the loudest. But there's something special about going to the world's most famous arena, and that's Madison Square Garden. And then when you, you know, if you remember those Bulls Knicks battles back then when Pat Riley was head coach of the Knicks, and you had Starks and Mason and uh, Charles Smith. And it, it, they were just, they were, they were great battles that you'll never forget. Z- uh, McDan- Xavier McDaniel and that series against the Knicks, you know, the, the Charles Smith series, up once, up twice, up three times. Was it three times or four times that they, that they finally gave up and he couldn't get it in that bucket? It yeah. Was just, it was phenomenal. One of those moments I'll never, there were so many games against the Knicks that I'll just, I'll never forget. I mean, <laughs> the Hubert Davis, Phantom Foul on, uh, uh, Scotty Pippen's phantom foul on Hubert Davis that Hugh Hollins called that, frankly, in my opinion, screwed the Bulls out of a fourth consecutive title in that first repeat run. Yeah, yeah, that's that's certainly the case. We're on with the great Lou Canellas, uh, Fox 32 sports director, reminiscing the Chicago Bulls, the dynasty team back in the 90s. And I, I, I have been to Madison Square Garden, Lou, and I can tell you, I, I was there when Michael Jordan uh, made his return with the Washington Wizards. OK, he, he made his return at the garden uh, and that was actually during the same time that it was 9-11 and the New York Yankees were in the World Series. Remember the dramatic series uh, after 9-11 Absolutely. and the dramatic, you know, uh, the Derek Jeter, you know, midnight, you know, uh, home run. I went from one game to the to, to the other. I had to do double duty. So I had to cover Michael Jordan briefly on his return to Madison Square Garden and I had to get to <laughs> old Yankee Stadium to cover the World Series back then so uh, that, that was quite some experience man but you talk about Dennis Rodman now I, I don't know how much you can share with us but I can tell you that I even party remember uh, Dennis Rodman had his uh, his club I think on Ontario Illusions <laughs> you remember that club yeah yeah sure. yeah yeah I, I had a chance to, to hang out with uh, with Dennis a couple Uh-oh. times over there, so watch out now. <laughs> but uh, but you 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 actually Lou, uh, correct me. Uh, you actually had an opportunity to hang out with these guys, you know, on 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 the planes. And we've seen some of the antics in the Last Dance as far as <laughs> what happened on those plane rides. We had uh, Steve Cashel on um, uh, a couple weeks ago to share some of his uh, plane ride stories uh, with the Chicago Bull teams. What else do you have for us? Listen, man, when you were with Dennis, all bets were off. I mean. <laughs> You just needed to make sure, make sure you kept yourself out of jail, and that that not, that's not to say he ever did anything illegal. He didn't. I, hey. Here, I, I told someone the other day that Dennis Rodman is one of the most giving individuals I've ever met. He's incredibly quiet, but if he feels comfortable around you and allows you in his in his inner circle, he is a guy that you want to hang with. And, and, and I'll, I'll share this story, because the last thing I'd want to do is talk out of school. Um, you know, there's guy codes still that exist, even going all the way back to the 90s now, Riles. And uh, in, in Rodman's case, on Tuesday nights, there used to be a bar, I don't know if you remember it, it was called Martini Ranch. Oh, yeah. And Martini Ranch was on Chicago Avenue, just east of Franklin. And Tuesday night was their night. And if the Bulls had a home game on a Tuesday night and didn't have to leave right after the game for a road trip, everyone would go to Martini Ranch, and Dennis would buy the whole place shots. <laughs> and Dennis was just one of those guys that wanted to have a good time within the law with everyone. He was everyone's friend. <laughs> he put Crowbar back on the map. Yeah. Hey, I yo, hey, Lou. Hey, Lou, did he, did he really, like, Miss a couple games though, or is it like, like so? Like, did he really leave during the season to go <laughs> party? Or yeah. well, a mini back home? Yeah. Like, is that how true is but that? Yeah, is that yeah, really he, true? He needed, Q, he needed to go on a bender. <laughs> that yeah. is crazy. Yeah, he went. He need. It's, it's so funny you react like that because I did an interview with Mark Cuban, the owner of the <laughs> Mavericks, imagine. the other day, and and Mark said that he was watching last week, and he said, "Oh my God, if Dennis Rodman came to me, and remember Rodman played for the Mavericks." For only 17 games, because <laughs> Cuban realized what he had gotten himself into. He said, if he asked me, hey, listen, I need to take some time off in the middle of the season, because I need to go on a 48-hour bender in Vegas, he goes, I would have lost my mind. But, yeah, he did. And the reason it worked here in Chicago, and I tell people, 
You know, listen, Phil was a, a wild child when he played the game. Yeah, he Read was. I saw that. Yeah, I saw, yeah Phil I saw talked about time. doing acid. Phil, right. Phil was a wild child, child when he played. So he could relate. He and he and Dennis had a real bond. Yeah, they did. That's in, that, that was incredibly uh, deep. It, I, I, I call it almost a father-son bond. Like, Dennis had a father-son bond with Chuck Daly before he left. And, and then, you know, went on to San Antonio and Chicago and Dallas. Um, and Dennis had that same type of relationship with Phil because Phil understood Dennis. And, and the one thing about Dennis is if he has to go on a 48-hour bender to Vegas and you let him, okay, he comes back. He ready to go. He's a new man. He is <laughs> I, could, I couldn't imagine Mitchell Trubisky talking about he, can he get a couple games off. <laughs> Yeah, well, Mitch, Mitch, no. right now, Mitch doesn't deserve a couple of games. <laughs> we had not even talked about the Bears, Jerry. We had not even talked about the Bears yet. I wanna, I okay, real, Lou, Lou, before we, we switch gears, and, and we appreciate you taking some time out on a Sunday uh, to preview, uh, you know, the last dance, uh, we got to ask you about the controversy regarding uh, all this week. Uh, and and I, I, you're, you're a Jordan guy. I'm a Jordan guy. Pretty much everyone in the city, yes. uh, in the world, are Jordan guys. And so when, when he says something, you know, you got to go, okay, hey, if, if the man said it, you know, it must be true. But when he called Isaiah Thomas out, <laughs> like, dude, I was surprised. He was adamant about his statements and his feelings toward Isaiah. And I knew there were, there were hard feelings. But when he called him an a-hole, <laughs> dude, I almost fell off. The, I go, oh, my God. And then Isaiah did the media tour. And I got to say, we uh, actually reached out to Isaiah this week to see if we can get him to come on. And, you know, well, we didn't get an opportunity to get him on. He probably tried talking all that talk that he was doing but, all week. But were you surprised? At how Isaiah Thomas reacted and responded to what Michael Jordan said about the bad boys, because you, I mean, we know the truth. I mean, you, you and I, we pretty much know what happened back then. Um, some people weren't around. Some people didn't understand. But were you surprised with Isaiah Thomas' reaction to what Michael Jordan said and how he tried to spin it day in and day out this past week to clear his name up? I was. I was. I really thought that he'd have the same reaction that Bill Lambert did. And Lambert basically said, yeah, we walked off the court. We don't care. I don't, I, he, call, you know, he called the Bulls whiners just last week. I mean, someone interviewed him from ESPN on Monday, I believe, and he said, I don't regret anything. I don't regret a second of the way I handled it. Now, remember, Lambert was the guy who led that whole revolt off the court with time still left on the clock. And MJ has every right in the world to still blank and hate the Pistons, as he said, because he's got scars to show it. Right. Now, was I surprised that Isaiah tried to backpedal and, you know, tell the world that it's, it's hurt him with the way he's been portrayed? I was. I thought he would take the Lambert stance, but, you know, that's Isaiah. I think it, I think, you know, here, listen, Isaiah. Is a Chicago kid. It's cost him dearly in the minds of basketball fans around the world. It cost him a chance to play in the '92 All uh, Dream Team, and 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 he, I truly believe I, I believe that Isaiah today. Because if you knew Isaiah Thomas before that had happened, I, I always thought even though he played for the Bad Boys, the Pistons, and they beat up the Bulls, I thought he was a quality kid from St. Joe's. Right. Okay. And then they pull that stunt, and everything good you felt about Isaiah, you question. And because he was the leader of that team, he may not have been the leader of the revolt that day, but he was still the leader of the team. And instead of standing up to Bill Lambert and saying, you handle it your way, I'm going to handle it my way, and handling it with class, he did. Yeah. John Sally, John Sally was on with Scott Van Pelt after episodes three and four last week. And Sally said that he went to Daly and Brendan Malone, and he said, put me back in the game at the end, even though the game was out of reach. Right. Put me back because I don't want to handle it like these guys are going to handle it. And guess what? Guess who played for the Bulls <laughs> during the championship run? <laughs> John Sally. Right. Right. Exactly. So here, real quick before we switch gears, though, I, I prior to... Prior to, and I probably one of very few, but prior to 
last week and MJ, you know, you know, publicly calling him an a-hole and doesn't care what, what Isaiah had to say, I, I pretty much gave, you know, Isaiah the benefit of the doubt. And the reason being, Lou, you're a Chicago guy, I'm a South Side Chicago guy, uh, Zeke, he's a West Sider. And the mentality of a Chicago West Sider, man, you and you know, growing up on the West Side, it wasn't a, a cakewalk. <laughs> and 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 I truly believe that part of that West Side of Zeke came out in his competitive nature. And he's like, I mean, because think about it, you playing playground ball in the city of Chicago, man. Yeah. And you get punked. You know, the guys want to fight. Literally, they want to yeah. fight. And uh, so I think that West Side mentality came out of Zeke, and he's like. F that dude, punk ass, right? And I yeah. and I think that's he that's the role that he was playing. And so for a, a Chicagoan, knowing his West Side roots, you kind of like, okay, I got him, I got him, because I understand it. But for him to 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 you know, well, I mean, there are a lot of stories, a lot of baggage regarding you know Isaiah from you know uh, people speculate that he you know he crushed the CBA, you know some of his other business dealings, and you know come full circle with this, but. Prior to, you know, what happened, I, I kind of like, okay, I get that. Chicago West Side is coming out of Isaiah Thomas. Did you get any of that? I don't know. Jerry, I don't buy it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I think when you, get, when you get to Isaiah's level, all right, and, and you're an example to kids, and, and you are one of the top, let's say he was one of the top ten players in the game, maybe mm. top five at that time, I think that he has a fiduciary responsibility to handle himself like a class act, even if you get swept by the Bulls, who, by the way, you beat up the last two years, and they had the class to shake your hands after you kicked their ass and walked off the court. They still had the class to shake your hands. I think he owed it to the Bulls. Now, he can sit all he wants and talk about how Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and those guys walked off. I, 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 just, I think Zeke, deep down, is a better person than that. He's a better sportsman than that. The better example for kids on the east side and the west side in Chicago that are growing up wanting to be Isaiah Thomas. I think he got caught up in the whole, hey, we're the bad boys. You don't push yeah. us around like that, and we're going to walk off and stick it up your keister. Now, I, I just don't. I think deep down he's coming out now because he regrets that he did it. I think I think we put too much weight into it, man. I think I, I, I think like see, even with me too. I didn't always go clap hands after the game. It's like, it's like a tunnel vision you have. It's now like, you won't be you know, able to. <laughs> you know, I see, I see them guy when I see him. I got to get back to the locker room and, and you know, get, keep it moving. Like it wasn't always like it don't, it don't mean anything at this at this point as, at pros. It's like it ain't about respect. It's about whatever. It is what it is. You know what? You know I don't have to. <laughs> I got no money. I don't. It's not little league anymore. You don't get in line and clap hands. If I'm mad at my feelings about losing a game, I, I want to see y'all guys. I'll see y'all next week. It don't mean I'm you know I disrespect y'all guys. It's just you know. I, I, I'm locked in. I don't, I don't. I don't have anything to say. So you don't think Isaiah <laughs> was a punk and and, no. and walking off? Heck no, hell no. I mean, I don't mean anything to do with anything. That's everybody else taking it personal, feeling like you know he got he got to do it this way. He, no, he don't got to be politically correct. He can he can be him. If he didn't want to clap hands, he want to clap hands. Yeah. So what? But it wasn't just him. Yeah. It was so what? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, Lou, I know time is precious for you. You want to switch gears real quick. That's, of course, uh, Quentin Demps uh, played with our beloved uh, back in 17. Mm -hmm. um, but, hey, man, were you surprised on the, the, the Bears and their, their, their move uh, to not to pick up the, uh, you know, uh, the extension on... $24 million guarantee? No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> How much was he supposed to get? Dude, he, he was he was he was backing Give up. Give him that twenty four million. He was backing what? up the brake truck. He was backing oh, up the brake truck. Twenty four point eight. Twenty four point eight. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't getting that Lou, percent. what 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 are your thoughts on uh, on Damn, the Bears? <laughs> well, well, my my thoughts are that the Bulls may uh, Bulls the Bears may publicly Ryan Pace may publicly be saying that. He is in support of Mitchell Trubisky as his quarterback, but he didn't show it. Right. And, you know, listen, it's the smart business move. Right. And if if you didn't think Kyle Fuller deserved a fifth year, which he didn't, okay, right. when he was in year four of his, uh, uh, of his deal, um, Mitchell Trubisky sure hasn't given you reason to give him or guarantee him that kind of money. And furthermore, they went out and they spent a fourth-round draft pick and we saw how valuable draft picks are to this organization the last couple of years after the Khalil Mack trade. And they went out and spent $21 million bucks on, on a veteran quarterback in Nick Foles. Now, having said all that, I think 
that when training camp starts, and I do believe there will be a training camp, maybe pushed maybe a week or two, but I think there'll be a training camp. I, I think that Mitchell Trubisky will be working for the fir- working with the first team when camp first uh, first Oof. opens. I think it'll be his job it's to loose. lose. Why? Because he was the he was the pick made by Ryan Pace, and I think that deep down they feel they owe him the opportunity to go out there. I mean, here one of the two guys has to work with the first team that first practice. I think they're going to give it to Trubisky. He's been around, being all right, ha- having there be no off, uh, no uh, organized team activities, no off season workouts works against Nick Foles. I don't care. You can say all you want, all you want about Foles knowing Matt Nagy's offense, and and Quinton can relate to this more than I can. But unless you're truly operating that the offense with the talent you're going to be playing with, it's it's going to take a little time. And every day that we miss of off-season workouts works against Nick Foles, at least for the start of training camp. And I think because Trubisky has been through it with guys like Allen Robinson and some of the other guys on offense, that offensive line, they know his cadence. I think he'll he'll be given the opportunity to start first. Hey, man, uh, g- great stuff. Real quick, so because Ryan Pace, before we this COVID thing hit, he came out publicly and said that Mitchell Trubisky will be a starting quarterback in 2020. Does he live by that? Did he say for the Bears? Or did he he say, by who did he say for? <laughs> he, well, yeah, for the Bears. Yeah. He said for the Bears? At, at, the, at the start of training camp, at the start of training camp, no. If training camp starts and Mitchell can't keep the job and he plays like he did last year in Bourbon A, then he's going to lose the gig. Hey, Lou. Depending on how Nick, how, how well Nick plays, though, too. You can't just give it to Nick. Nick got to he he come show and prove, too. It can't be, it can't be, it can't be even. Somebody got to take the ring. Q, you're right. Somebody and, gotta listen, take it. You 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 look at Foles' numbers. Foles hasn't exactly lit the joint on. <laughs> right, <Foles>. exactly. <laughs> so he's not gonna just come in and start right away. He gotta come earn it too. Well, Lou, hey, we, thank we, you. You gotta you gotta you gotta dig deep into Foles' numbers. I mean, this guy, yeah, he was a Super Bowl MVP, but for the most part, his career has been real average and at best. Yeah, real average. <laughs> Yeah, wow, it's, it's yeah, going to be interesting. He's they're won both, seven games in the last four years. They're both backups at the best. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to see some football this upcoming fall. Hey, man, uh, you know, with the pandemic, the family, everybody's good. Congratulations on on the the, the, the little tyke. How old is she now? Two years old. She'll be two next Sunday on Mother's Day. God Aww. bless you. Oh, this, God bless oh, you. Mother's Day. How's it feel being a poppy? Coming up. Coming up. Oh my God! What a what a blessing. Complete. It's a life changer. I know anyone that listening that that has kids. I know you know Jerry and Quentin. I don't know if you have kids, but it's That's a life crazy. changer, and I'm so lucky to have her. And the silver lining for me and in, in this whole coronavirus pandemic has been, you know, they actually built a studio in my guest bedroom here at home in my condo. And while it's tougher to do my job because I don't have access to everything like I do at Fox, the beauty is I'm able to put my daughter. To bed every night, tuck her in, oh, read prayers with her, help her brush her teeth, Aww. and I wasn't able to do I wasn't able to do that because I was always anchoring at Fox mm-hmm. prior to this, and and I'm, I'm blessed to be able to have that opportunity with her now. And these are her formative years. I mean, you know, she's building this bond with Daddy right now, so it's been awesome. Well, you know what? God bless you, brother, and uh, take full advantage of every single moment because they they grow fast and they grow quick. My 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 daughters, I got uh, two of them at the University of Illinois Champaign. One's a junior, one's a sophomore. Um, and you're right with this uh, this pandemic, it is a blessing because I get to spend every day with them. And uh, it's I'm cherishing every moment. It's fantastic. So uh, enjoy it, brother. And I saw the tweet where uh, she was celebrating. Was it, was she celebrating Richard Trubisky not getting the extension? Was it? Was it? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Did you see that dance? It's honest to God, she was celebrating the Colts Met pick. We were watching the draft together, and she saw Daddy get excited. Yeah. So she started to dance. Yeah. And I'm like, "Where's my phone? I got to get this on tape." <laughs> yeah, I knew so it was cute. Cole Komet, but I, I I thought she was cheering also that uh, you know that that. 
that there was a new sheriff coming to town, and it wasn't Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> hey, also, brother, I know uh, the restaurant business has taken a, a pounding. We do business with Sierra Nello's uh, Let Us Entertain You and Petarino's downtown. How uh, how things have affected you and your and your restaurant? Oh man, it, it's tough. It, listen, as you touched on, it's not only me; it's every restaurant tour out there. And our Lincoln Park location, which has been open, Avli, A-V-L-I, that's what the name of the restaurant. Yeah. Uh, the one in Lincoln Park on Wrightwood and Wayne is actually held up. Now, it's been around for, you know, 18 months. So it's got some history there, and the neighborhood has been incredibly supportive. Our River North location has had a tougher go of it because prior to COVID-19, it was only three months old, and we had never done carry-out delivery. So you're changing your business plan in the middle of this pandemic, and you're trying to just keep your doors open and make it work. And slowly but surely, the River North community has been supportive and coming around, and we appreciate it. And I just, I hope, and and I say this with all sincerity, because it, unless you've been in the restaurant business, you don't know how tough it is. Yeah, It's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult to make money when everything is great and the economy is rolling. When you're put in this position, oh my gosh, all odds are stacked against you. So every restaurant restaurant tour out there, I say a prayer for because it's not easy for any of us. Yeah, you're right. absolutely right. It is very, very uh, difficult. And I encourage everyone to support your local restaurants, wherever you may live. You know, Gale Street Bingo. and down the street with uh, George and his crew. We try to support them. Uh, Sarah Nello's and Wheeling, we, we support them. Just order out at least, if you can order out, order out at least once a week to try to support at least once a week. We're going to be ordering out later on tonight as well. Hey, Lou, thank you so very much, man. Be safe, be careful, and keep up the great work on Fox 32. And we certainly hope to talk with you down the road, my good friend. And enjoy the last dance, man. Thanks, guys. Be safe. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Talking to you, Q. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, brother. Take care. Lou Canella is Fox 32 on our TR60 hotline. You guys